Pray, O oh Lord, we have come into your house to listen, to pray, and to praise you, who created all things with a single word. Send us now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, so that our hearts may be open to receive your life-creating word in Jesus Christ. May prayer and praise be in our speech and hearts, so that our worship may honor your holy name and be a blessing to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. It is good morning. And this is the day the Lord has made. We are to rejoice and be glad in it. Also, today is the sixth Sunday of Easter, and uh, a day we celebrate mothers around the world. Some may not have given birth by natural but they are also giving birth spiritually to, or they have mothered other people spiritually. So I include them all in our celebration of Mother's Day. So we begin with the hymn number 521, O Day of Rest and Gladness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people. Turning us from our sin to live for you alone, give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, that we may walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake. God forgives us all our sins. As a call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here the worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help save, comfort, and defend us. Lord. Amen. prepared for those who you love the joy beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you, that loving you above all things we may obtain your promise, which exceed all we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we hear the written word.
The first reading is from Acts chapter 10, verses 44 to 48. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and exalting God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for, for baptizing these people, these people who have received the Holy Spirit, just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they received him to stay for several days. Here ends the first reading. Thanks be to God. Second reading is taken from John chapter 5, verses 1 to 6. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandment and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you, that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends. If you do what I command you, I do not call you servants any longer. Because the servant does not know what the master, the master is doing. But I have called you friends. Because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. 
and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. So the Father will give you whatever you ask. In my name, I'm giving you this command, command so that you may love one another. The gospel of our Lord. Amen. May we be seated as we sing our next hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable, acceptable unto you, our Lord and our God. Amen. This morning we celebrate, we celebrate Mother's, Mother's love, Mother's Day, Mother's love. And this is one of this is one of my favorite story of Mother's Day celebration. It is a story that I heard several years ago that originated from from um, I think you may have to move to the next pew. This story originated from somewhere in South America. It said there is an ancient legend about two warring tribes in the Indies. One tribe lived on the lowlands and the other tribe lived on the mountains. The mountain people invaded the lowlands and one day and as part of their plundering of the people, they kidnapped a baby, one of the lowlanders' family, and took the infant with them to the mountains. The lowlanders did not know how to climb mountains. They did not know how, which trail leads to the mountain. Consequently, they were unable to track down the mountain people in a steep terrain. Nevertheless, they went out on their, they, they went out and they, they sent their best party um, fighting party men to try to climb up the mountain and to rescue the baby. The party of long line, uh, low liners tried one trail after another. They tried one method of climbing and then another. For several days of trying, they did their best, but without success, and feeling helpless and hopeless. The men decided that their cause was lost, and they prepared to return to their villages below. And as they were packing their staff to descend, they saw the baby's mother walking towards them. They realized that she was coming down the mountain, that they themselves were unable to climb. And then when they saw that she had her baby strapped in her back, how could that be? One man greeted her and said, 
We couldn't climb this mountain. How did you do? How did you do this? When we, the strongest and the most noble men of the village, couldn't do it. And then the mother of the toddler shrugged her shoulders and said, it wasn't your baby. This is mother's love, the most powerful instinct that God has placed in women. And mother's love is unconditional, is so unconditional and exceptional that it is in its own category in itself. Some call it mother's love. It is a degree of love that is only fully expressed by the mother, by the love of a mother. About 13 years ago, our nation was shocked. Canada was shocked. A small town, in fact, a village in the northern part of Alberta called Marino, and Merithoff. And then James Rasko, the man who hid himself and ambushed four ICMPs and killed them. And then he killed himself. And during the interview, they interviewed his father, and his father basically you know, said he's a devil, is of no good, bad character. He described him as a devil. And later, when the reporters interviewed his mother, his mother referred to him as my son. See the difference. No matter what he did, though she didn't condone what uh, he, her son did, father said he was a devil, and mother said, he's my son. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of love that persists no matter what wrong was done to it, even amongst wild animals. A mother will give her life to save her offspring so people will respond to the degree of love with an equally fierce loyalty. To understand this truth, we have to understand the church, the Christian church, the apostolic church. The church is a family. It is a family of God. Through baptism, we have been adopted as children of God. God is our Father, and Jesus is our brother we just sang a few moments ago. And everyone else in the world has been, who has been baptized is our kin, is our brethren. When Jesus was told that his mother and brothers were looking for him, what did he say? He said, who are my brothers and my mother? When we are baptized, we are joined by the power of the Spirit. And we become one family. That is why I personally sometimes have a problem when we in the West, we like to invade or fight other countries because when we go there for war, we are sometimes killing our own brothers and sisters. We are all one family under God. In the eyes of God, we cease to be John Doe or Jane Doe. We become children of our Heavenly Father. In this family, the older and experienced members have the responsibility raising and caring for the younger and inexperienced members of the church. We don't see that in St. Anne's Guy because we are such a small group. But I've experienced that in other congregations where the senior members would take upon themselves to nurture the younger, the younger Christians. When I became a Christian at the age of 19, I was discipled by a man by the name of Vitalis. And when I was studying in Germany, God kind of gave me another uh, family, Paul and Maria Heuberger. 
and didn't nurture me. When I moved to study more in Denmark, I ran into another Mary, Maria Forum Jensen in Ulgo, Denmark, who also nurtured me. I gave credit to so many godly people who gave her, uh, who helped shape my Christian faith in God as I walked this journey. I believe that in Christ we are all foster mothers and fathers of God's children. So today, as we honor, uh, we honor men, sorry, we honor, we honor women in the church, because in God's eyes, you are all mothers. And more and more I do reflect, more and more as I do reflect on the dangers that affect our world, the world wants to lure our children into ways that offer no real fulfillment, into materialism, into drugs, into hatred, into spiritual alienation from God. It is so easy to immunize them against the disease of the body. But what about the diseases of the soul? In the light of this awesome responsibility that Christ, Christian mothers have, I feel that Paul's letter to the Ephesians, the first chapter, I have heard your faith in Jesus Christ, Paul writes, and your love towards the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease giving thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. In this passage, Paul gives my, God, God gave thanks, sorry, Paul gave thanks for the faith of the love of the Ephesians. Obviously, there were people who had great faith in Christ. Obviously, there were people who lived out their faith and love for one another. They were a church of Christian mothers and fathers who care very well for God's children. But Paul knew that the Ephesians faced trouble, like we are facing our world today. So he begins to pray for them. He says that he received, they received the spirit of wisdom and revelation. He also prays that the eyes will be opened, the heart, the eyes of the heart will be enlightened, so they will know the hope they have in Christ. It is important to know that it is, it is he, and he wants them to see. He wants them to see what is their hope, what their power. Paul knew that the forces opposed to the Ephesians were real, were real and greater than they were. The people of the church of Ephesus could easily be crushed by their force. But Paul also knew that Jesus ascended, had all things, all powers were subjected subjected under him. When the powers which opposes efficiency, it was their hope, the power of the glorified Christ, the power of God Almighty. Like Paul, I give thanks for the faith and the love of the mothers of the church. I remember one love And the nature of many, the nurture of many of them. There was my own mother, of course. Her experience, example of faith, trust, devotion to Jesus Christ had a great effect on me. She's one of the reasons why I am a Christian today. But there were many others which I have alluded to earlier. Imagine God's, imagine the image of God as a shepherd is a good example of this. God cares for us as a good shepherd. God provides for our every need. God takes care, takes care to the green pastures and leads us beside the still waters. 
And God protect us from the wild animals that will devour us. Like a mother, God prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies. When others will flee, God remains steadfast, providing for our every need, just as a mother will stand by her child through difficult times. Of course, God's love is greater than any human love. Mother's love is the only analogy that helps us to understand the love of God. But it is a good analogy. It helps us understand how loving and giving God's love is. The most unconditional example of human love is mother's love. To say that God loves us more than that at least gives us a frame of reference. Jesus is a prime example of God's of mother's love. In Jesus, God died in Jesus. His children, he died for his children. The ultimate expression of love is to give one's life for another. This life that we live is very short, though it can feel endless when we encounter every demanding, difficult, and desperate days and people, feeling supported in the trials of faith by the presence of Christ and the Holy Spirit, and in the community of faith, we can come to believe that working in and through by love first and last and always as best as we can in this mortal time will get us eternal reward. We need the insight to know that what is true and good, we need the patience to persevere. We need the grace for being forgiven when little hands and feet do what they shouldn't. We need the faith to know that at a point comes when we, we, we cannot do anything, but we need to give it and leave it in the hands of God. I also pray that we might have the insight into the power, which is our hope. The source of this hope is a glorified Christ. I don't try, don't try to be a Christian mother without it, without this hope. This power in Christ Jesus, it is impossible. We can only succeed at being a Christian mother if our source of power is the one who has ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Almighty, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm.
Let us pray for all people according to need, their needs. Christ Jesus, born of God, as He chose us to be the bearer of fruits of eternal life. Lift us from the shadow of doubt and awaken our souls to follow your commandments, to love one another and to fully abide in you. God of mercy and love, hear our prayer. Christ Jesus, born of God, grant us such consciousness of our gifts from the Spirit that we hold ourselves and those who govern throughout this planet, this country, and this community accountable, acting always to uphold your standards of righteousness and equity on behalf of all people everywhere. God of mercy and love, hear our prayer. Christ Jesus, born of God, lovingly embrace with healing all those who are ill in body, mind, or soul, and all who give them love and care. We now join our hearts together to pray for those in need, those suffering from COVID-19, those mentioned in the bulletins, and those we named in our hearts. God of mercy and love, hear our prayer. Christ Jesus, born of God, with trumpets and the sound of the horn, you shout with joy as those who have risen above this earthly plain are welcome to the everlasting peace of new life in you. We pray especially for God of mercy and love. Hear our prayer. Christ Jesus, born of God, we pause in this moment to offer you our other heartfelt thanksgivings, intercessions, petitions, and memorials. We pray for political prisoners, people who have been tortured for their faith or their political beliefs. We also pray for the two Michaels who are in prison in China, Michael Spat Bo and then Michael Kovrig. We remember and pray for them that you give them the strength and many others. We pray for their families and the children that they have left behind. Sustain them with your grace. We also pray for the families who have experienced uh, this carnage in Afghanistan. Over 50 children killed because they went to school. Father God, we pray that you open the minds of these people to see that all human beings are human beings, a boy or girl, and we are entitled to be educated to have a better life. We pray for the governments around the world that will work together so that the peace will prevail in that part of the world. God of mercy and love. Christ Jesus, born of God, we offer special thanksgivings for those among us who are anointed to teach and lead us in your word and ways. Grant them continual renewal of purpose and endless replenishment of vigor. We pray especially for Pastor Samuel and his family, your holy and apostolic church. God of mercy and love. Hear yeah, our prayer. Almighty and ever living God, ever loving God, infuse us with the inner peace and the fortitude to lead actions of our lives. Be the instrument of rejoicing that play a new song of faith and love each day, each and every day. We ask you, Jesus Christ, your loving, our loving Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, your truth who together with you are one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And uh, mothers, happy Mother's Day to all of you. Greet one another with that peace.
Let us pray. O oh God of all creation, you have made us good. You made what is good, your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with this gift that we might be for the world's sign of your gracious presence. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times in our places give thanks to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of your Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene, Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection with earth and sea and all the other creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their own and in him. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and give it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our deliberate, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in the time of trial, and lead us. Forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. of God's love. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. His love is demonstrated 
through the body, the wine, and the bread. Come, the table is ready. body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ that cleanse you from all unrighteousness and preserve you unto eternal life. May his presence be with you in this life and the life to come, and may he sustain you with his Holy Spirit. And as we celebrate this special occasion, pray that the Spirit of God and the God's love will transcend all issues that you are facing in this life and life to come. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Depart in peace. It's the boy of Christ looking for you. thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and the blood of your Son. By your Holy Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us his peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. First, uh, I want to remind those people here on council that we have a council meeting this Thursday coming up, beginning at 7.30. It will be on Zoom, as, the last, as some previous ones have been. And the Zoom site will open up around 7.15, 7, 7.15. And the meeting at uh, 7.30, and it'll be chaired by Krista. If anyone has anything they wish added to the agenda, then they should write to Krista and, and tell her about it. I think she may be sending out an email tomorrow reminding people as well. I will try and send out the, the link again, but it's the same link as the last time and the time before that. So... There's the council meeting. Hopefully, if they ever raise the curfew, I mean, get rid of it, <laughs> or move it to 11 or 12 o'clock, we can have our meetings face to face again. The curfew is the only impediment because we usually go till nine or even later and some people have to get home. All right, that's the first thing. Second thing is you may have noticed that Sean here has been taping these uh, these services the last few weeks, and I've been, uh, Sheena's been posting them on Facebook, and I've been posting them on our YouTube channel. Did you know we had a YouTube channel? Well, we do. And I hesitated to put the link on the website because if you put a link per program, each one has to have a separate code. Then I discovered we could put a link to our channel and so that I put that link on our website. It's, it's, it's long and complicated right now, but you can just click on it and it'll take you there. And once you're there, you can uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, apparently when we get 30 subscribers and over 150 hits, then we can apply for a custom name to put on our, instead of having the big long 14, 15 letters, whatever it is. Anyway, so go to the website, whose address is on your bulletin, by the way. And click on, just under the sermon for the day, you can click on the link to our channel. And if all goes well, within a couple of days, even today's service might be up there. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I want to thank uh, Sean for doing this for us. That's really good. 
We have a beautiful church. If you can go just go, just don't look at me, just avoid me, but just look around the background. It, it is beautiful. It's a, it makes the church look like a cathedral, you know, uh, very nice. Um, and I sound better also, better than what you're hearing from me. Uh, once again, I want to thank you all for coming. And um, Maria and Margareta for coming. Appreciate that. And all of you. Conclude our worship service with hymn number 631, Love Divine, All Love ex Excelling. having taught us what to believe and what to do. Help us, O oh God, through the Holy Spirit and for the sake of Jesus Christ to keep your word in pure hearts in order to strengthen our faith, perfect our holiness, and comfort us in life and in death. Amen. Amen. Our worship service is over now, but our, our call to service, to love and to serve God begins outside of these walls. So let us go forth in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And Mother's, Happy Mother's Day. <laughs>